Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King which is a very different Scooby-Doo movie than the traditional formula is as it is a bit of a fantasy movie for the Scooby-Doo and the Shaggy Rogers character as they're going on this fantasy mystical quest and so it doesn't really necessarily follow the traditional mystery solving blueprint and formula that they do for Scooby-Doo movies and it also has the characters of Fred, Daphne and Velma in a very supportive capacity so already it's pretty different. If you're able to look past all of that and kind of view this movie as a bit of a one-off special edition then you can kind of get behind it. I mean it is nice that they've got real monsters here and that they're trying something different. I just personally as a Scooby-Doo fan do prefer the traditional framework that they follow for mystery solving. But anyway, with that being said, let's get on with the review for Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King. So from a storyline point of view, the film starts off with the gang heading back home to Coolsville as there is a Halloween carnival going on. At the Halloween carnival, they bump into a character called the Magician Krodsky, who is a very similar character to the Abysmal character from Aladdin Return of Jafar. Now Krutsky slash Abysmal does not let Scooby or Shaggy enter his magician's show. Scooby and Shaggy then vow revenge on him and expose all of his secrets and completely ruin his magician act. Krutsky then vows revenge on them based upon what they've done. Krutsky is then able to steal a fairy's powers and is able to use this to finally become a real life magician and his new mission is to try to steal the goblin scepter so that he can become all powerful. Shaggy and Scooby then go on a bit of a mystical quest in order to stop him by sunrise and throughout their journey they encounter a lot of magical creatures such as witches, goblins, werewolves, jack-o'-lanterns, headless horsemen, magicians and fairies and so from a storyline point of view it is pretty interesting but like I said right in the beginning I do prefer the more traditional format for Scooby-Doo animated movies. So from a cast and characters point of view, like I said before, it is mainly to do with Scooby-Doo and Shaggy Rogers trying to go on a bit of a mystical quest adventure to stop Krudsky the Magician getting his hands on the Goblin Scepter. It's a real shame that the Fred, Daphne and Velma characters are a lot more in a supporting capacity in this film, but that's fine as it is mainly to do with Shaggy and Scooby's adventures. I did think Krudsky the Magician was absolutely hilarious and very twisted and evil very similar to the abysmal character, like I said before, from the Aladdin Return of Jafar movie. Now all of the magical and mystical creatures that Scooby-Doo and Shaggy Rogers kind of encounter in their journey to stop Krudsky the Magician are really really cool as well, such as all of the goblins, the Goblin King is a really really cool character, and the magician that gets turned into a rabbit that tries to give Scooby and Shaggy magical cards, I wish they used those magical cards a little bit more, but what they did use with them was really, really cool. And the Headless Horseman was a real threat to Scooby-Doo and Shaggy as well. So from a character's point of view, very different to the traditional Scooby-Doo movie. And if you can look past that, then it is pretty enjoyable. So from a visuals point of view, I actually was not that impressed with the visuals for this special movie adaptation. I thought it did feel a little bit more like the 80s cartoon animation than a modern adaptation for the movie franchise which is a little bit disappointing but that being said all of the magical and mystical creatures really do immerse you into the world and into this journey slash quest for the Scooby-Doo and Shaggy Rogers character so whilst the visuals aren't necessarily the best they do immerse you into the world of what's happening in the Goblin King. So in terms of comparisons, I was just not that impressed with Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King, so I don't really think it can be compared to the other mystery-solving formats of the movies. I feel like even though Zombie Island featured some real monsters, it was just on another level to Goblin King, which I think unfortunately is a lot more similar to the 80s cartoons, like I said before. Those featured real monsters, and I just feel like it felt more akin to those than all of the brilliant modern day movie adaptations. So from a comparisons point of view, I just think that Goblin King just was not that great. So overall, like I said before, I was just not that impressed with Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King. I mean, it is watchable, it's just not that enjoyable. And I think it's a lot more similar to the 80s cartoon series rather than the modern day movie adaptations. I thought the visuals weren't really, really that great. I really did not like the character reductions. The storyline was okay, but I just don't think it was as great as the other brilliant movie series have been for the Scooby-Doo franchise. And so for all of those reasons, 
I am going to give Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King a 3.5 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.